Oh. Is that, so. is that Michelle but spelled like without an extra L and an E? Isn't it Michael? No, huh? Hello, Ma- one, one, Mike, why, why Michael. Michelle. Oh. Michelle. Okay, it's John like and a, Michelle. Like a word play. Michelle. Shall we move on to the next persona? Are we ready, guys? All right. All right. All right. 33 years old, so kind of like towards the end of spring. Ooh, now they're earning much. So this is like basically the previous couple, but progress a few years later with higher yeah, income Yeah, this one, now. because at the point of time just now was uh, Persona A was 27 years old. So if you plus about five years mm. after the resale HGB MOP or something, they will, they will be at this stage. Yes, whereby both yes. the income increased, uh, they, are, they are holding a better uh, pro- profession. And then now they want to explore further. Yeah, anyway, just now that one was first time buyer. This one is HGB upgrader. So fulfill the five years yeah. MOP already. So literally, not, you could, you not could very be the, you could be the Wayne and Joanne, but and upgrade. plus uh five years later. <laughs> five years later, yeah. Wayne and Joanne will become the John and uh Michelle. Michelle. Yes, yeah. Michelle. Correct. Michelle. Uh so basically same thing, but I think now uh, usually uh, the clients we meet at this stage, right? Their earning power is higher now and they For are sure. actually more ready to take the move because they have built up their assets like in terms of their cash and CPF. Mm. So now they really want to go into the investment already to mm. see how they can um basically increase their assets and restructure their portfolio. Um, One of the fear that I am curious about, I'm not too sure why is it over there. It says that heard many horror stories. Mm. But what kind of horror stories are there? At this kind of, uh, you know, this stage. Oh, buy wrong condo. Buy wrong condo. Yeah, uh, okay. So they could be like, for example, uh, they are 33 years old now, but they could probably, when they heard many stories, heard is a uh, past tense. Yeah. Mm. Oh. So that means they heard it before 33. So yes. they could probably hear it in like 31, 32, one day over lunch at uh, Marina Bay. Hey, I buy that property in Marina. Mm. Wow. Then after that, wow, sell already, lost money. Mm. Wow, painful. Um, then they probably want to avoid these kind of stories uh, because yeah. they'll always be thinking, oh, I want to buy core central area. So they could be hearing this sort of story. Mm. Oh, core central, very good CBD area. Mm. Central living, whatsoever, mm. la, bay, bay living, waterfront living, mm. uh, all the bay bay stuff. Then... <laughs> Jane so, is behind laughing at you. <laughs> so I think they want to avoid that kind of um, position. Yep. When they talk about investment, because they say that um, they also commence to double in stock. So they, they could probably be like in uh, investment banking or they could be bankers themselves. Mm. They could be uh, exposed to this kind of realm. So um, I think probably some of them, they actually bought into the wrong properties mm. or they buy into various properties that maybe did it's not a sound kind of investment product. Yeah. So of course, I think there's a lot of ways to spin a story. Today, if I want to tell you that, oh, you can buy into um, Orchard area, yeah, yeah. right? I think we can spin it around and say, oh, you know, you're looking at core central area, freehold, whatsoever. But it might not be all these criteria that make sense mm. as to why your properties will perform or not perform. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so I think this could be some of the horror stories that they could be experiencing. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I think in terms of like the fears, uh, they will probably also be thinking: Is hey, should I be, you know, all in into real estate, or should I be divesting into real estate as well as uh the stocks? Mm. Yeah. So, um, what's your thoughts on this? I feel that it's easy to dabble in stock mm-hmm. because like you control how much uh equity you want to put in. Right, you, you you control how much money you want to put in. Like mm. I can put in one dollar mm. also can, I'll put one thousand also can, I'll put ten thousand also can. Mm. But for property it's a different uh quantum. Because yeah. when we talk about property, it's like one million dollar, two million dollar, and we work backwards, right? It's uh one you, you require one quarter of it, five percent cash, twenty-five percent uh in CBF or cash. And when it works out to be, you realize that the amount is minimally uh, Mm. 250 onwards mm. this is just based on a 1 million dollar property mm. but if you look at like a 2 million dollar property then the, the 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 down payment that we are requiring will be like 500 thousand mm. I think this is where people struggle because it's mm. a very big move yep. and, and, and 
I would be afraid as well if I'm at that age because mm. uh, there's a lot of horror story and mm. if I let's say it's a wrong move it's 500,000 it could be their entire life savings kind mm. Mm. Um, of course if let's say anyone were to buy into like the stocks or um, you know other form of funds they can also leverage so those will be highly leveraged they can either like buy sell like options or options trading so mm. all these are also highly highly leveraged um Definitely, if let's say you look into an isolated manner, if you're looking purely just in terms of um, the stock market, yes, I think you could see that, oh, you know, stock market have actually risen by like 20, 30%. Maybe some of them year to date is like 60, 70%, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, that is if you are very disciplined and then you don't get swayed by sentiments. Yeah, you know? So uh, if you are seasoned and then you feel that you can do that, then I think that's great. But at the same time, some news might be uh, might put off certain investors and then they will say, that, okay, I want to take position now, right? And then they cannot time the market. And I think if you will see timing the market, I think stock market is probably harder to time. Mm. Unless you really time it recently and you buy into the Chinese stocks and then all the Chinese stocks every day up like 10, 15%, then great. But if, again, if you're looking at like say percentage wise, then we also want to take a look at the overall whole quantum increase. You could buy into the stocks and then you say that maybe you put in 10,000 mm. and then it increased 20%. 20% mm. of 10,000 is just um, how much? 2,000. Mm. So the absolute quantum amount of um, the increment is not a lot. It's just $2,000. On the grander scheme, if you are talking about property, mm. same percentage wise, maybe the quantum is a lot higher. Yeah. yeah. So I think that will be the key differences. Lah. Yeah, I find it interesting that Jenna just said that it was actually like do you like you find it easier to dabble in stocks. I actually find it a bit more difficult because I feel there's a sort of volatility. And unless you're someone who actually really go and follow all the news on stocks and you're tracking it, yeah, you can put money in the stock, lah, but whether you're win like making money or losing money is another thing. Whereas personally for me, I feel that at least when it comes to real estate, the the asset as the property is an asset. It's if, real. It's real. It feels a bit more stable and predictable for me. But also because maybe I'm not a seasoned investor when it comes to to stocks. I, I, I'll be honest, I'm not the kind who check every day and then yeah. go and read the reports and follow mm. the things. Uh, so when I go into stocks, right, I I, I, I think um, it, it's not so easy for me personally. I feel mm. that with the property, if I can identify a good one, I think I can just throw it aside and wait for three years. What we're talking about yeah. is like um the vault volatility of the mm. of the stock market because yeah. like a lot of us are like myself I also yeah. don't go and check the stock market every day yeah. and I and I feel like as a third person I feel like they are very prone to uh, articles and announcements right, and a lot right. of uh, political relation which I cannot catch on mm. uh, whereas mm. for property in Singapore it's very stable All right. yeah no matter like oh whether election coming or not uh, the MRT breakdown or not like the property market is like okay <laughs> one yeah but also I feel that at this stage uh, this HDB upgrader, 33 years old, uh, they likely have children already by then. No, they yeah. don't have. Lai. You see the picture, don't have. But most of most people, <laughs> most, of our, I tell you, most of our clientele would have children at this age. So uh, I think they, they want something that is a bit more stable. Mm. Uh, you know. So if let's say they have kids, right? Uh, partially of the motivation to upgrade to a condo would be the facilities, actually. Facilities. Yeah, they will want the facilities. kids to have some facility to enjoy after school and stuff. Correct. Mm. Correct. So let's just give this uh person. <laughs> um, HDB upgraders. Let's give it um about say two hundred fifty thousand dollars of cash. Usually, a cash proceeds. Uh, the cash proceeds we are looking at is about say. Three four hundred k. Four hundred thousand. Okay, but it's a total proceed. That means that yeah. CPF plus cash. If let's say they were to up CPF plus cash. No, uh. this one is that uh, I'm assuming if let's say they sell and buy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they sell the MOP BTO, right? They will have they their first pot of uh, first pot of so uh, cash goal. proceeds is four hundred thousand now. Cash only, uh. wow, so I much, believe so uh. Uh, Because at this stage, right, their CPF combined would have about three hundred thousand. Yeah, combined. Yeah, mm-hmm. would have about 300,000. Mm. So that's on the CPF portion already. Mm. If let's say their cash proceeds... three four hundred k Yeah, let's say, about let's say 400,000. Okay. So they have 700,000 of investable funds. Mm. Let's say they take away 100,000 for their own savings. Mm. So down payment is at about 600,000. Mm. So that's 600,000 of down payment. Let's take a look at their 
loan ability. They can borrow about 1.476 million. Do not buy a car first. You want to buy a car, you buy after buying a house. <laughs> I wasn't expecting out of them. Don't buy a car. I mean, yalla. Uh, buy a car buy after... You have three kids, you have three kids then how? But buy you, the car after you buy the property. Yeah, or you buy rent, one that is a like maybe uh, COE, yeah. COE ending soon and full, then you just clear. Yeah, so it doesn't affect. Or if you want to buy, buy under those that is like, I don't know, private lending that it doesn't... In-house loan. Yeah, doesn't mm. flat out under the MAS one. Yeah. Uh, then I think that'll be okay. So this also means that you can buy something probably at about, say, $1.9 million. Because if you were to buy $1.9 million, firstly, mm, reasonable your loan is within the 75%, number one. Mm. Number two, cash, CPF, stamp duty, altogether is about 500 and... Let me just toggle a little bit. 540,000 you round up. Mm. So you still have sufficient. Yep. Plus you have the 100,000 that you can keep aside for your other investment mm. or your renovation. Mm. So I think this will be the kind of range that you're looking at. Well, of course, the only thing that will change will be your monthly mortgage because now your monthly mortgage is about 5,006 spread over 30 years at 2.5%. Yeah, I feel yeah. like uh, couples at this age, they have uh, two hurdles to overcome. Mental mm. hurdle. Number mm. one is that the down payment would be this amount, 600 over 1,000. Mm. Uh, number two would be that you will see an increment in terms of your monthly mortgage because you mm. compare like, yo, last time I buy HDB yeah, yeah. only how much? Uh, now I buy condo, the size never increased, then buy yeah, I need yeah. to pay so much I, more. I've heard some opinions where they feel that it's a downgrade because yeah. they feel that they're paying more for upgrade, a smaller downgrade. size. la. Mm. So also, I think, you know, going back to our topic today, which is the interest rate, let's say we have this couple now, they are HDB upgraded and they are sitting on the fence. Do I, I want to sell my HDB, but you know, maybe the interest rate dropping, I can fetch higher price for my HDB. Now I'll show them uh, the condo, how much it increased. Okay. <laughs> so right, when I first started my real estate journey, I was doing this HDB at Pongo. Hmm. Um, it's at Pongo Waterway, location fantastic, mm. just mm. right beside the Waterway Point. Mm. Back then, there wasn't a lot of supply. Mm. One four room over there, we were asking at five five zero. <gasps> okay, five five zero. zero uh, mid floor lah. Five five zero. Like going okay. hundred already. <laughs> yeah, five five zero. So we marketed first viewing. We got an offer. Mm. This group of seller, what they want to do is they want to move to the east because parents are staying in the east. Okay, right? okay. They are staying in Pongo. Workplace is at um Braddle area. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So they have to right, travel right. quite a lot. Yeah, it's quite far. So their objective is to sell already and then after that move into a private property mm. in the east. Okay. Mm. Okay. So first viewing got an offer, five five zero. They don't want to take. We mm. respect it. Fast forward, we conducted another 30 viewings. Across how long? Across one year. <gasps> yeah. One year. I persisted for one whole Did any year. Any other offers come in after that? Okay, first why offer? right? It's also because after that there are more and more clusters reaching MOP. Oh, correct. Oh, okay. More and supply more supply. Coming into the market. And then, if you talk about the prices, right, naturally those that is at waterway point, yeah, the yeah. price will be higher. Yes. Yep. One LRT stop away, the price will drop, drop. significantly. Yep. And that's when the rest of the area start to reach its MOP. Yeah. So it took us one year for them to eventually find a buyer at far, far, far. <laughs> I I got a question. I got a question. So between that 550 and the 555, were there any other offers or no, actually? Um, or do you just waiting to hit that price? Or is it was no choice after one year? Yeah, like, I think, okay, I think la, it's no more of like no in. choice because um, I think that the, the, the way the whole house or the whole building is being designed is that you have some having like west side oh, you know and then okay. it's like 308 uh, 309 it's 308 okay, I think if I'm understand. not wrong <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> you can see the Pongo experts are here. Yeah, no, no, we are not the Pongo experts. So, so, so moving from that, so they finally, after one year, they sold it for five thousand dollars mm. more. Yeah, come give me the but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I but the, yes, yes, the what property that. that they are buying in the east <sighs> prices have moved up by um, I think close to two hundred six figures one la. So the, the numbers will definitely not be able to make sense. Mm. So what we are trying to say is, if you are going into what we call an expansion phase from a HDB to a private. Of course, the private property must fulfill your criteria in terms of stay and then fulfill our criteria in terms of our uh, mode analysis. Then I think in terms of the expansion phase, it is okay to say that you take a position as a certain price range that is of course in line with the recent transaction and then you move to the private property, especially if the area is in a growth area. Because four years ago, mm. East Coast area, 
hasn't really moved by a lot. Yep, yep. Right? It's only recently when the slew of new launches, in, in fact, I mean, back then, Mayor Road, Amber, all these new launches already helped to push out the prices. Mm. But it's only lately when all these slew of new launches right, helped to push out the price even more. Mm. So I would say that one year right, gap right, is an opportunity cost. Mm. So if you're moving from a HDB to a private, if you're going to an area where you want the growth and all that stuff, then I think it's good to so, so take I, position. So I think it's interesting because actually how you're putting it, right? It sounds like it could be a misconception when some sellers think that, hey, yeah, yeah, interest rate dropping, going to be a seller's market. I can hold my property for very long to see mm. how much like I can get. But I think you have to look at what is the property you're holding, number one. Yeah. What are you intending to go to next, number two? Mm. Yeah, so yeah. we have a general rule of time in uh, PRB. Let's say you are moving to a bigger asset, bigger quantum. Mm. The advice will be as soon as possible. ASAP. But if, let's say you are going the reverse, for the, uh, the reverse. Yeah, reverse downgrading, yeah, down right sizing, down to the right size. If you're from Lander, you want to move to HDB, then sure, take your time because you are sitting on the biggest asset that you will ever sit on in your entire life. Um, it is possible for you to have a bigger gain if you were to wait. wait then yeah. after that, you can downgrade to whatever you want to buy. So, so I'm, I'm curious for your the the clients who, who hit that extra 5K, were they still able to move on? Yeah, they were still able to move on. Yeah, still have to pay more. So they were able to to move on. So this is what we call an expansion phase, whereby you're moving to um, a different asset class. Mm. And then um, just like what Jesse mentioned, is to move as soon as possible. Mm. But on the other hand, on on the other hand, if let's say you are going from a consolidation phase, Mm. that means your current property, maybe you're looking for moving from a five room to a four room, or you're moving from a condo to a HDB, then okay, you might say that, okay, I want to hold right. until you hit a certain price range because it's for my retirement, then every dollar counts. And mm. I say, okay, I only move once I hit a certain price. Yeah, we, sh- we have clients like this as well. Mm. Yeah, so then of course, we have to try our best to say that, okay, we reach a certain price point before you start to move. Mm. Yeah. So like given the interest rate is going to fall, like for you guys, how do you see the resale condo market performing? If let's say you're going to advise John and Michelle who are going to be the H- HDB upgraders. It's going to be a, I guess, because I, I feel that a lot of HDB upgraders may also be coming in to, to want to buy the condo because they feel that interest rate is dropping. It'll be cheaper for them. So I think first you have to look at uh, which area. Mm. Yeah, which area that uh, they are going to go for, especially if it's uh, moving from HDB yeah. to a private. Um, some areas are growing aggressively mm. because of number one, the master plan, because of the few launches that are probably sprouting up the area, those are usually causes the price to move up mm. quite significantly. So depending on the area, then I'll say, okay, you might probably have to take action. That's number one. Mm. Number two, I also want to take a look at the supply over there. Mm. So certain areas, the supply is not a lot. And then it's not a matter of whether you can hit a certain price, but mm. it can be a matter of whether can you find a buyer so that you can buy into the area. Uh, so certain area is really like very, very lack of supply. Mm. And then you have probably certain time crunch that you want to register your address before the primary one ad- ah, the registration. So all these factors plays a very important role. So I think it's a matter of the location and then a matter of understanding the supply and demand in that certain area to help you determine uh, what is the speed of your exit. Mm. Yeah, correct. So over here, Izu says, right, actually uh, their desires that because all their friends and colleagues are all upgrading, right? They're a bit mm. FOMO. They want to use real estate to upskill the portfolio for longer term planning. It's always like that, right? So, I tell you. So sometimes, right, the clients, right, <laughs> don't listen to us realtors. I say that, okay, okay, you should upgrade. Okay, you have the capacity to upgrade uh, to a landed. Okay, sure, we'll help you find the landed. But no, they don't listen. <laughs> you know when they listen? They listen when the friends bought the lender. So I'm a bit curious because on this slide over here, it says they are HDB upgraders and of course, they didn't say upgrade into what, uh, mm. but they did say that they have a bit of FOMO. Then usually, I know that FOMO also comes with like new launches. So between new launch, resale condo, is there a better choice? Because I understand that the new launch scene has moved a bit yeah. from a few years ago. So uh, I think uh, a lot of buyers' um, thoughts is that hey, uh, new launch is priced very high. Mm. You know? And new launch, it would definitely Take Set the new the bench. Yeah, <laughs> in terms of the price point. Because if you look purely based on PSF, I don't think nowadays it tells a full story because of floor plan harmonization. Oh, yes. Right? So PSF would naturally tend to be on the, the higher, higher side. side. But if let's say all new launch cannot buy, then why are some of the homeowners able to take profit from the new launch mm. that they bought a mm. couple of years back? So of course, we have certain frameworks to help you determine whether does it make sense to say, oh, you buy into um, the new launch or 
when it hit a certain price threshold, then should you be looking into resale? Of course, we have all these frameworks. So um, naturally, when we take a look in terms of all these kind of different products, then I think uh, there's mm. a lot of considerations to make. Yeah. When you buy, when you buy at a high, doesn't mean that it is wrong. Yeah. Ultimately, if let's say, so today I pose a very simple question. If I buy a new launch, two beta, that is uh, at 2 million. Mm. No, sorry, three beta at 2.2 2 million. Mm. A resale, maybe that is at about eight or 10 years old, yep. is at about, say, two to 2.1 million dollars. Mm. Mm. Price range is about the same. Mm. Which one should you buy? Mm. New launch. New launch. <laughs> Because it is newer. Correct. Right. So at the same quantum. Yeah, correct. So definitely there will be certain gaps, right? That can be uncovered, that can be explored. So I would say it's no longer like whether is it priced high or not. But how does it fare against the sur surrounding and what are your exit strategy? Yep. Yeah, so uh, of course, there's a lot of like factors and all that stuff to look at. La. Uh, we are really in this really confusing era ever since this uh, GFA harmonization thing. Because mm. some Correct. project have, mm. some project don't have. But when you new launch, new launch is new launch. Right? How will you know like hey, this one oh, got the harmonization? Oh, this one don't mm. have the harmonization. This is even to me in the, in the industry, like every day I'm mm. reading about this, I am still confused about Correct. It. And even like recently when I, I, I met a couple of my clients, they were just asking me, what's the best new launch to buy right now? Oh. This is a question where every week the answer may change. <laughs> mm. it, it will change because it really depends on the opportunity that's appearing in that particular week. Were there any, um, maybe firstly, any other cooling measures being measured? Mm -hmm. uh, within the project itself, the developer, did they announce any star buys, new promotions? Your upcoming new launches, any of them announced any pricing or anything yet? So there is no one thing that we can tell you immediately, but at least over here, we can give you a framework or some suggestions that you can follow that will make it safe for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think some of the things to look out for is, um, for example, if let's say today you're looking at uh, some of the new launches without the, um, that is, post four plan harmonization. Mm. I think very simply what you can do is you can just remove the aircon ledges from the surrounding projects that you're looking at and then you look at the PSF on that same basis. Uh, so that's one thing to look at. The other thing to look at is of course if you apply the least reset method just to normalize back into today's PSF pricing mm. to have it make sense in terms of how is the delta between the PSF in the new launch versus the resale market. Uh, but of course, the age also plays a part because as the property yep. ages, volume starts to get lower. So, uh, but at the same time, the older projects, overall floor plan is also bigger. Yeah. So it, this also leads to a higher quantum. So you also have to look at the quantum perspective as well. Yeah. So it's not a one size fit all kind of uh, formula. Correct. So today, if let's say I'm John and Michelle, or if let's <laughs> say you're John and Michelle, what will y'all do? So in my opinion, I feel that I will have to cash out from the HDB Statistically, HDB uh, will not grow as much mm. after two years of MOP. So if I'm towards that stage, I might say, okay, I want to take my position. I want to extract my equity. The only way to extract is to sell. Mm. After I sell already, I won't all in into the, my, my next property. Mm. I'll keep some. I'll buy into a growth area because I still see myself having the ability to mm. switch and flip. Mm. Give myself, let's say, five years. Mm. 33 now. Five years later, I'll be at 38. Mm. 38, I will still be quite okay to say that I want to still be able to sell and buy again in future. Mm. So I might just buy into say, if I can buy into a four bidder resale, I'll buy into a four bidder mm. resale. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I want to go bigger in size. Yep. And uh, I'll keep some of my cash into other form of investments. And then, because I still foresee rate cuts to be happening. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Because right now, inflation rate is still not at the 2% target rate. So I will still keep it and then I will just probably just invest into the stock market. Uh, into more like ETF, you know. Yeah, so to just to it. touch on a little bit in terms of the detail, I think in terms of the property ownership, uh, we will, mm. I will want to explore a 99 wine kind of uh, ownership mm. so that there might be a possibility for the 1% to come out mm. and then we still uh, retain our current property, maybe a 2 or 3 beta condo and then what is the possibility of that 1% coming up so that you have a free name to buy something else? Okay, but if let's say uh, today you're 99 one, right? Okay, so a lot of uh, couple, they will have this concern. Mm. Okay, let's say I'm the wife. Yes. I only hold a 1%. Yes. Okay. 
and then my husband hold ninety nine percent. They will think that ah yeah later worst case ah we talk about worst case if a divorce were to happen uh, I will only take one percent. So that's not the that's not the case and that's not oh, true. Oh okay okay yeah, I always have that means I will feel like oh is it mean that I only own like one percent of the share of the company right of the property yeah, yeah. So, and so, so, if so let's say anything true. happen choi choi mm. means that I only get one. Oh so it doesn't yeah then how does it work? Uh okay so if let's say because the ninety nine one is just the mode of holding ma like right. how many percent you're holding on to it. Uh, I think they, they will still look into the overall perspective. Okay. It can be 991, but the financing can still be 50 50. Okay, so okay. it's the financing, like, like who put I in mean, that, more that's money. one of it. Okay. Uh, if you change light bulb, you right. also contribute to it. Okay. Right, to the but house. all these are like cash, right? You right. must yeah. still receive okay, Everyone start changing the light bulb now. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, you just who pay sure. the, utility, your, the utility bill? Eh? Yeah, so, so a lot of factors will come into that, right? Mm. Because, and, and I think ultimately, who foul? And then what was the reason for falling, ma? Uh. Right. So so those are the reasons. So I mean, at the end of the day, if you are, um, if you are the the wife and you have this concern, I mean, whichever lah, whichever. So whichever place safe. The, the wife should hold ninety nine percent lah. No no no. It doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I think ultimately, uh, don't let this be the kind of mindset that mm. maybe affect you mm. in terms of uh, how you want to put for the, the property plan. But of mm. course, if you have any question, just, uh, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a lawyer, so you can speak mm. to any one of them. Mm. Yeah, just make sure if you are changing a light bulb, you got a CCTV pointing, you change the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> so you got evidence, yeah. I did work for this house. Yeah, or you mop the floor, mm. scrub the toilet bowl. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you've been this doing at home? <laughs> please check in with your law firms because, yeah, yeah for, for more concrete advice. Yeah. Because uh, that's what you've been not, doing, ah. Uh, yeah, we are not in George. the legal... <laughs> Uh, profession, okay? Yeah, so yeah, so can do a 991 method and then uh, keep your options open mm. and if let's say, you know, your income again do increase, then that's great. But if let's say, whatsoever reason, we look on to another perspective, I lose my job. Mm. Okay, I lose my job. And then, I don't have the income to tank. But usually, because of the TDSR as well as the LTV, you should be able to sustain one. Mm. Because if you lose your job, usually you have a golden handshake, you'll mm, be able to sustain. Yeah. And then what you can do is you can start to sell, right? At most, you sell if you can find a job. So you also need to kind of project yourself what is your sustainability rate. Mm. If you feel that you can sustain, then when do you need to start selling? At most, if you buy into something that's big from four beta, you can sell and then you move to a three beta, mm. right? Mm. If the price doesn't, doesn't move up aggressively. So okay. in that way, you can also safeguard yourself in the worst worst case event. Yeah. So that's how I would want to structure this so that uh I don't have to put myself in the sticky situation. Hmm. Yeah. Thanks, George, for your advice. Okay. So I guess maybe this sums up our episode for today's NOTG. Ah, so fast. We have 50 seconds left. So you want to go on for how long more? So fast, ah. Uh? Oh. oh no, we covered already. You can end already. Oh, oh end ready, huh? Can end ready. Okay. Do you want to end? What are you saying?